What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Avenge channel. Today we're going to be working on part two of our Aluma body Razorback build. Um, if you haven't seen the first video, this is essentially a whole aluminum body guitar with the EVH inspired stripes as a really, really big pick guard. Um, today, as I stated in the previous video, I have some clearance issues here on my Floyd Rose. Not sure if it's not sure if it was an issue with my programming, not sure if I kind of measured it wrong. I went off one of my Jackson B's that has a signature Floyd Rose. Maybe the specs are a little bit different. Not really sure. But today is going to be the final day. I think that I'm going to get this completely mocked up, ready for um, powder coat. I have a couple, definitely an hour worth of grinding to try to get a few marks out of this thing. Um, when I cut it on my table, I believe I had the feed rates a little bit too fast. So guys, first things first with this, I'm going to remove the neck. Couple pickups laid on the side, I don't want to do any damage. Um, I'm going to start first and foremost by trying to clear for my uh, Floyd Rose, which is essentially a bit tight around here. Um, I'm going to be doing that with just this little Dremel tool. Get these at the mean tire. Um, we have some sandpaper discs here. Hopefully I'll be able to get inside here and get uh, the right contours again without going, doing too much damage and getting off track. The one thing I do find with the Dremels is sometimes they hook a little bit weird and they uh, kind of throw you for a loop sometimes. But uh, that's going to be the initial start of the video. Um, I'm going to get this thing stripped down. So the one thing I actually forgot about, and I mentioned this in the other video, was that um, with your Floyd Rose, you obviously have this stub out here that holds your handle, your whammy bar in. And in my program, when I actually designed the car and built it and cut it out on the table, I actually forgot to put the relief cut in here to clearance for that. So I think the first thing that I'm definitely gonna have to do, remove this pick guard, get the plasma cutter run, and just notch that out, clean it up. So I have the relief cut marked out and I'm getting ready to cut it. What I'm actually going to use for this is my Hypertherm 45 XP machine. Great little machine, very, very versatile. Has a gouge setting if you guys are into, you know, doing buckets or anything like that. Um, what I will say about these, these machines is that as excellent as they are, I use this every day, essentially. Um, they will burn the hell out of you. They like to throw multi material everywhere. It's, it's a plasma art mixed with compressed air and I believe it's around 90 PSI, 85 PSI there. So it does flicker pretty good, as you will see coming up. Um, they do like to burn you. They'll throw a molten metal, doesn't matter what material it is. They're kind of messy, they're smoky as hell. Um, another thing as well, if you have spent any time around welding whatsoever, I'm sure you've heard of the term um, a welding flash or an arc flash. And essentially what that is, is the light off the welding process itself is so bright that it kind of sends UV light into your eyes and burn your retinas essentially and if you never had that I'm envious of you but what it feels like someone took sand and essentially just threw it in your eyes and now you kind of got to get your eyes rinsed out and whatnot. It usually takes a day to get over it um, and if you do it enough times I guess you'll never get over it really. So what I do recommend is a good pair of cutting glasses for sure. These are just dark sunglasses, safety glasses. They do the, they do the trick. Uh, these here will actually protect you from UV light even if you are willing. Don't recommend it, but it will protect you from getting that art class just because it kind of, as the UV light is coming into your eyes, it's actually bouncing the UV light away from you. So it does help with the art flash, but once again, you do want to be able to see after you do this process. Once again, throws molten metal everywhere, so I definitely do recommend being covered up. Welding gloves, don't have to if you like getting burnt, it's your choice. Um, but that's about all I can say about it. The really cool rigs. Another thing that I learned, if you're ever in the plasma cutting, um, one thing that I learned when I got my CNC table, it's just a little tidbit for you guys, um, at the end of your cut, your machine, it doesn't matter if you have a machine torch or if you have the handheld torch, at the end of it, it's going to want to keep producing air for probably 10 seconds, and so you can hear this air coming out of this right now. What that's actually doing is cooling all the consumables in this tip, and that's giving you a longer consumable life. So what you want to do when that's doing that, let it be. Just lay it down and walk away from it. It'll cut out when it's ready and it's cooled down. So there you 
have it. Um, very quick, very simple. Once again, that material is very hot to the touch, so definitely, definitely keep gloves on. Definitely not as nice as the CNC made it, but uh, we get it done, we clean it up with the dog runner, and we should have our clearance there. So for any of you guys that actually want to actually look at the cut and see how it kind of turned out, um, as you can see here, hopefully I'll get you in that shot there, it's really dirty. If you had a CNC machine, this hair is essentially what the CNC came out like. As you can see, it's very, very smooth. Um, this hair is just freehand, not the best of freehand, but um, if you ever use the plasma, you any little jerk or anything that you do, if you have a twitch, you're probably not going to have the cleanest cut. But um, yeah, and this is the piece. Once again, once again, half inch aluminum. Cut it pretty quick. So guys, I brought you in really close so you can kind of see the main structure of this guitar. Um, once again, half inch aluminum plate buzzed out on the uh, CNC table. But um, these four holes here, this is what holds the pickguard on. I have them recessed on the back side. So when the pickguard bolts down, we have about, I believe it's a half inch gap all the way around. Um, once again, these two holes right here, that holds the Floyd Rose. Two other holes that I'm gonna to to address here soon is um, there's two holes that actually go in here. And what that does, that allows the claw for your springs on your Floyd Rose to have your tension. Um, these four holes right here, I'm not sure if you can see that in the shot, I've actually drilled those 330 seconds. And what that's going to allow me to do is actually tap them so I can um, use the supplied hardware with the pickups. And these need to be kind of um, threaded because essentially when you set up the guitar, you might want your spring height or your pickup height rather closer to the, spr to the strings or further away from the strings. And threading this is going to allow me to do that. So I was running into a little bit of trouble. Um, this is probably the second time I've only ever um, tapped aluminum. And unfortunately I broke the tap. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to save that hole, which is kind of disheartening. Um, I don't want to put bigger hardware in there, which is the only way I can re-drill it a little bit bigger, tap it a bit bigger and use bigger hardware, which kind of sucks for the pickups. But unfortunately that happened. Managed to get it out, but it was being a jerk. The guitar just doesn't want to be a guitar. It doesn't want to be played by anybody, apparently. And uh, it's definitely holding its own ground. But um, I think what's happening is where we have such a fine thread and aluminum is essentially a sticky material. It doesn't, uh, as you're going down with uh, carbon steel, you can kind of break the chips and you can kind of feel. But what I'm kind of having an issue with here, I can't really feel anything until it gets really tight. And when it gets really tight and jammed, it's like it's almost too late. Um, I did get two done. This one was almost done, and then unfortunately I had a casualty. Um, but I'm going to try to save that hole. Fortunately, I have another tap, and uh, we'll see what happens. There's not a lot of tension really on that. It just holds the pickups in, but I don't want it to be kind of flopping around and being lame. So uh, let's try these other two holes and see if I can get it done.
So guys, just to explain to you how sticky this actually is and why I'm having so much issue, hopefully this will focus. As you can see on the threads of the tap, they're clogged solid with, um, with aluminum. And unfortunately, down here on this part of it, it's actually your cutting, your cutting threads, I want to call it. Just check out how clogged it is. Like it's just, I actually put it on the wire wheel a couple of times and I had a brush, but it was just not having it. Um, I think I did manage to save the holes. I don't think I'd bet my life structurally. I don't think I'd hang off them or anything, but um, here's actually what the tap is supposed to look like. See how clean the threads are? And you can see how they're cutting and tapered on the end there. And uh, yeah. And that's why I'm having so much issue because I think as it's going down, it's just getting jammed solid with um, aluminum bits. And it's really hard to break the chips and kind of screw it back up. I think I managed to save these couple holes here. Also went ahead and drilled a couple holes here. That's going to be for the claw for um, for the springs for our landing bar, our dog bar, Floyd Rose, whatever terminology you like to use for it. So I'm going to go ahead now, get this ready for powder coat, clean everything up with the grinder. Um, once I get that done, put the uh, I'm finally finally going to put the uh, pick guard back on and clearance that for the Floyd Rose. We're going to do a test fit of all that, and if that's good. Break it all down, ship the powder coat, and we're going to get this powder coat. So guys, I think that's going to be it. I think that's where I'm calling the video today. My battery's getting very low on my phone, barely anything left. But uh, we have all the edges buffed. I'm going to send that to powder coating. Next video, guys, you're going to want to like and subscribe because I'm going to tell you, we're gonna put this together loosely. And if I just had to do MIG shift wiring just to get some sound and string out of this, string it up, see what happens, see, we can play from there. But if I had to MIG shift wire it just to get a video for you guys and a sound clip for you guys, that's what I'm gonna do. So for sure, like and subscribe. That'd be a great help for me. Um, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.